Station. <laughs> a lot of that had to do with my mother. My mother was a sort of a semi, semi pro opera singer. She's a very creative woman. Not only did she sing, but she painted pictures too. She was a, a, a great artist, painter. And, you know, when I was, she was like kind of the polar opposite of my father, you know, because my father was a, like a mechanic type of guy. He liked to build things and fix things. And, and so people say I'm kind of a combination of both, both people, you know. Uh, my mother was just, it was very important to her that I was involved in creativity. You know, so she bought a piano. For, I was around six years old when I saw it. And uh, yeah, I started playing piano. And then later, my father bought us a, the first record player. It was made by a company called Motorola. And with this record, with this, with this uh, record player came a, a demonstration record that had about 20 tracks on it, each track maybe a minute long, all different kinds of music. And I was fascinated by this one track by a guy named Chubby Jackson. He played this song, maybe it was the Elephant Walk or some kind of song on acoustic bass. And I remember hearing that, it always stuck in my head. And then years later, when I was around 12, and I saw the acoustic bass after trying to play the violin and a little bit of cello, I said, no, the acoustic bass is really what I want. No one else touched it. And so that's, that's kind of what did it. Well, this is, this is a band, it's a, somewhat of a young band. I was at a point where I wanted to, you know, a new band, and as a, Kind of as a joke, you know, my, me and my engineer said, uh, let's go on YouTube. And we put in, like, the world's greatest drummer under 21. And so Mike Mitchell and four other guys came up. And Mike's playing on the drums and he's got his hair like this. And, and, uh, and you know, he was the better one out of, out of the five. And so invited Mike here to the house. His mother said it was okay. At that time, I think he was 17, I think. So he came and we immediately went to Brazil. It was the first place I took him to. And then Becca, a piano player, <coughs> Becca, uh, I was introduced to Becca through Lenny White and Chick Corea. They said there was this guy, this guy is like amazing. Lenny White said he heard Becca when he was 11. And Becca's one of these guys kind of, if you know, if you believe in past lives, he's almost kind of like a guy that must have played piano last life or something because he's much further developed than his age. And uh, he's, he's a great, amazing player. He's going to do some amazing things in life. And then uh, Cameron Graves, also known as Planetary Prince. He's part of the West Coast Get Down. I've, I've known him for a long time, you know. Um, uh, I've known all those guys with Kamasi and Ronald Brunner Jr. and all those guys from the West Coast Get Down. And, uh, and he came in the band too. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun band. It was fun. Um, and then also we have Caleb McCampbell who comes in sometimes for special things. If, if, if Cameron can't make it, you know, Caleb takes his place. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's nice. It's a bunch of young guys and they, they try to keep up with me, you know. <laughs> You know, Chris has been my son. He's a very creative kind of guy. All the people in my family, is, uh, both sides, are very creative. And he's very, he's, he's a wordsmith. You know, he speaks French, you know, he speaks uh, a tiny bit of Spanish and, of course, English. And he's, a, he's kind of a wizard with words, which is those guys that do, do that. And so, you know, was not, I've, I've collaborated with him before in movies. I've, I've done some movies uh, with him. The one that comes to mind is the uh, Jet Li movie called Romeo Must Die. And he, it was when Chris was younger, but he first started collaborating with me to, you know, you know, because I needed rap music in, in, in the score. And so, you know, he's done it. I've been waiting for the chance to do something with him on a grander scale. So this came up and it was just perfect. He was a perfect person. He got a great energy. So he came in there and he did it. And, uh, and then we look alike. <laughs> it's hip hop, funk, rock a little bit there. 
It's 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 kind of a it's a fusion of a lot of things, you know. I don't know any other group that sounds quite like this. This maybe this will start something, you know. I don't know what you'd call it. It's kind of a it's a harder edge, you know. When you played me the mixes, God, it came in like Led Zeppelin. It was it was hard, you know. And it's nice. I like it. Very driving. So it's it's a. It's hard. I haven't coined a phrase yet for it, you know, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely hard driving hip hop. Wow, I've worked with so many. I mean, I've worked with, you know, Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones, Paul McCartney, uh, I've worked with Donny Hathaway, Aretha Franklin, um, Cameo. I mean, there's so many, so many different artists. Because, you know, what's funny is, Aside from being an artist myself, I had a pretty long career as a session bass player. And I played so many sessions with many different artists, pop artists like Seals and Croft, uh, Donny Hathaway, Aretha Franklin. I've done records with Quincy Jones, uh, Bill Withers, uh, all, all kinds of artists, you know, and I, I, I really enjoyed that. That's actually something that I really enjoy doing. I recently, the last record that I actually played on as a bass player other than my own was an Al Jarreau record, which was his last record, which I produced, myself and Marcus Miller produced the record. And uh, that, that's fun. I always love playing, going into a session with guys that you know maybe I don't know, or in this case with Al Jarreau, I knew all these guys. These were the guys that played on all the Michael Jackson records. John Robinson on drums, Greg Fillingaines, uh, Paul Jackson Jr. on guitar, and, and I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved that sort of thing. Well, there's many singers there. I mean, they, I, I, I don't know why the singers in Korea, for some reason, are more soulful. I don't know why. Uh, but there's a couple girls there. I don't know their name. There's actually three girls, too, from Korea that have a singing group that I came across. I, I don't remember their names, but I would love to produce a Korean singer, girl, female singer, that's very soulful and do a great record on her. So it's, it is, there's some great Korean musicians, yeah. Well, right now I'm finishing the record up, mixing, mixing the album. I'm doing that, um, that's, the, that's the main thing that I'm doing right now, is mixing the album. We're finishing up a tour, we're gonna go uh, at the end of this month uh, into Africa. We're going to Senegal, and we go to Portugal, and then I'm gonna come back after that, take a rest in May, and then starting June, we go back, we do our summer tour, and then we'll come back uh, around the middle of August, take another break, and then uh, we go to Europe again in the, in, in the fall. And all while that's happening, and I'm, I'm working on a book right now, my sort of, uh, the Stanley story. So it's, gonna, it's, 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 it's a very interesting book. It's going to be a book filled with pictures and basically you'll see a picture and I'll talk about it. So people have a reality of what I'm talking about. It's going to be very, very nice. So I'm putting that together. And I have a radio station, an, an, an internet radio station called uh, Stanley's Gallery that's coming out. I'm going to release that. And Chris is a big part of that. And that that comes out uh, probably in about a month, so that's fun.